So hey guys, welcome back to Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Hey, it's Josh. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you listening and engaging with me and spending time with me on this show. I love it. I have a great time delivering it. I hope you get a ton out of it. Uh, today, I have a special guest. Her name is Kim Dyer. Kim is one of the two founding partners of Keystone Capital Management Group. Uh, she started this back in March of 2016. She is in what's known as an I an IAR, an investment advisor representative. Now, what's interesting about this interview, which is totally different, that I've never done an interview like this before in the history of this show. I've been doing this podcast now for over seven years. I've never talked about this topic on the show, so pay close attention. Uh, Kim has an alternative to the 1031 exchange. As you and I both know, the Biden administration is very different than the Trump administration, and Biden administration is talking about raising taxes, getting rid of the 1031 exchange, getting rid of all these quote-unquote loopholes, rules in the tax code that benefit the quote-unquote wealthy. Whatever your position is, I don't care if you're left, right, blue, red, doesn't matter. You need to listen to this interview with Kim Dyer because we're going to talk about what she calls the 453 installment deferred sale. This is a way for you to sell your property, put the property into a trust, have the trust sell your property, and then defer, not eliminate, but defer all of those capital gains tax for up to 20 or 30 years. And in that time, gives you the opportunity to reinvest the proceeds, pay no tax on it right now, have inflation work in your favor because you lock in the taxes that you owe, but don't have to pay those taxes for 10, 15, 20 years, and in the meantime, take what would be the government's money, invest those dollars, get a return on that money, and then have your profit actually pay the taxes for you, okay? So everybody's talking about the 1031 exchange. What's going to happen? Is it going to go away? Is there going to be some changes? Possibly, and if there is, we have the solution for you on this interview. You're going to love this interview on Accelerated Real Estate Investor with Kim Dyer from Keystone Capital Management. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey, Kim, welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Hey, it's great to be here. Fantastic stuff. So, Kim, listen, I know there's a lot going on. You guys are working with clients all the time. You're in the financial markets every day. Uh, I'm always, you know, when I when I meet and talk with somebody new, always interested to kind of figure out what they're up to. What, what, what are they working on right now that they're passionate for, that they're excited about? Um, so what does your day look like? What does next week look like? What are you working on that kind of gets you going? Well, we're ex really excited right now because the market in Arizona has as elsewhere, is just going uh, crazy and it's skyrocketing. So we have some clients that, you know, are at that age when they're saying, I have four or five rental properties and maybe I'm going to take this, I'm going to sell when the market is high and take advantage of that. So we have uh, half a dozen clients that are evaluating uh, selling and then how are they going to sell it? How are they going to avoid the tax on it? So it's working through those issues of um, what's the best way to uh, uh, defer tax, um, avoid paying all of it to the government and mm -hmm. take advantage of the high market and get it in the, the, uh, the financial market. Yeah, fantastic stuff. So I know a big part, we, we talked about this kind of getting prepared for this interview, most people talk about accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. I need to save. I need to invest. I need to buy my next building, make yeah. my next investment in whatever, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, crypto, cannabis, whatever they're investing in. And they're all about the accumulation phase. 
I know you and your firm really focuses on the back end of that, which is the distribution phase. We're living longer. We're doing more. We're living more active lives, longer lives. Uh, there's obviously this whole baby boomer issue and people living longer and assisted living facilities. People are just living longer, healthier lives. And so distribution is not something that I think about as a 44-year-old because I'm still in just accumulation phase. So tell me about some of your clients and tell me about some of their concerns in that distribution phase. What are some of the things that you're helping them plan for? Well, for one, um, an IRA or a 401k or a, or a qualified plan is a great way to defer uh, paying taxes, but that is just part of the game, right? So you're taking advantage of that tool during your working years when you're making your highest income, but then when you get to retirement and whether that's 65 or 75, you know, people are definitely working longer, but when you, you've used that tool, now what? So we like to say that if you have a large IRA or deferred plan, the, it's just not complete. So now what are we going to do to maybe get it out of that plan or pay the taxes on it? Because it's such an interesting, you know, you may have a million dollars sitting in a deferred plan or an IRA plan or retirement plan, but how much of that is the government? Mm -hmm. So what we do a lot is we show a person's financial picture and we show the portion that's due to the government. And regularly we, we run schedules showing what their distribution requirements are for that, what kind of tax they're gonna pay the rest of their life. If they live 30 years, what tax are they going to pay on that million dollars? Because it's still going to grow. And depending on how aggressively you grow, the tax that's due on that is incredible. So we, we like to say your plan is just not complete. It was good. You used the tools. Now let's complete your plan and let's look at what we might do uh, to try and uh, maybe get it, maybe do a Roth conversion maybe get it converted to some tax-free, uh, things that are gonna grow tax-free. So there are solutions out there and uh, it's a good time to evaluate and see if any of those things might work for you. And if you can get the federal government, their portion uh, maybe paid for, may, at least decide when you're gonna pay it because the government can decide if they're gonna increase how much you have to pay on that Mm -hmm. on that retirement plan, uh, they decide how much of it they, they're going to own. So it, people are interested in looking at that. Yeah, that's fantastic stuff. So big hot button today's market is this 1031 exchange, right? You went yeah. from having one president that was uh, obviously a real estate investor on a very yeah. big level, very pro real estate, very pro uh, business. Um, and not to say that the Biden administration is not pro business, I don't want to go into politics, but they are mm -hmm. talking about increasing taxes, capital gains uh, on stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. They are talking about possibly getting rid of the 1031 exchange and the step up in basis. Um, so there are alternatives. We talked about this before we started recording about the 1031 a lot of people know about. So why don't you just kind of explain for people that maybe not know just the basics of the 1031 exchange. And if that were to go away, what does that mean? And then secondly, second part is what are some alternatives? Cause I know you're, you, you're aware of and you're implementing strategies in case the 1031 were to go away. So I guess this is a three part question. So hopefully we can keep this together. Okay. One is okay. what is the 1031 exchange? Explain it in your words. Number two, the impact if it goes away. And number three, alternatives, if it does go away, what are some tools that already exist in the tax code that you're working through to help people defer, delay, you know, defer, 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 right? The yeah. 1031 is defer, 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 and die. That's what people talk yeah. about, but defer, defer. There's opportunities. Some of this stuff I've never known about until, you know, we started talking off camera. So again, what is a 1031? What if it goes away? What are some alternatives? Help us answer those questions. Go ahead. Okay. Well, a 1031 is before you... Sign on the dot before you make the sale, you commit that you're going to 
sell that property and buy another like property. So um, you have to you have to meet certain deadlines of uh, you have you have to hire an intermediary. You have to meet deadlines. The the new sale has to be made within 45 days. So you're exchanging this property for another property. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you get to defer that capital gains to the new property. And, and so it's been very advantageous that people like that. There's a couple of things. The government is talking about eliminating it. And two, right now, a lot of the commercial real estate, people are worried about uh, because so much of the market is changing and it's uh, switching to online, it's switching how we do business, the models look different. So it's a volatile time for commercial real estate. So buying into the same type of property might be volatile. Maybe you won't get your rent on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's going to be enough business, but it may take a while to come back. So the 1031, if you have one, I don't, the, I think the government will grandfather it in, but if they get rid of it, then you won't be able to uh, sell and exchange for another property and defer. So mm -hmm. I, I hope that is enough detail. Uh, I won't get into all the specifics, but there's very definite deadlines that you have to meet. You have to have an intermediary that does the deal. Um, and so, and you have to have like-kind property. Um, there are other alternatives that we can yes. look at, and it's in the code section 453, and it's been there for as long as the 1031 exchange has been there. So it's, it's tested, and it's a good alternative. What happens when you do an installment sale, um, sometimes you, you carry the note for a buyer, and they pay you over 10 years, and at the time you make the sale, there's a percentage that's taxable. And as you receive the payments on an installment sale, you pay the tax. So you pay the tax depending on how you receive the payment. Sometimes people receive payments and then receive a big balloon in, in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And But as you receive the money, you pay the taxable rate. And that's looking at the proceed less your basis. And mm -hmm. there's a percentage calculated, and every payment that you receive, you pay that percentage tax. The 453 allows you to go farther, and we have a process where if you put that sale inside a trust, it will allow you to totally defer paying tax, paying that capital gain. Mm -hmm. And what it does then is the trust makes the sale. It, so it's a real estate investment intermediary sale trust. So and it's uh, that's available. It's it is liquid, but you don't own it. So okay. you do put it in there irrevocably. Then the trust makes the sale. Um, let's see what else do I need to say about it? Oh, the other thing this does, you know, you can make the sale, and if you are carrying the note. You don't know if that person is going to run the business in the ground. Uh, right. You don't know uh, if the market, financial markets change. In this way, you can go ahead and make the full sale, get the full value of your property, and you don't have to worry about collecting it or what might happen. So you get all your money. It goes inside the trust, and the trust then can pay you an income stream, and then the trust, you defer paying the capital gains for 20 years. The downside is you're paying the capital gains rate at the time, 20 years down the road. But what we've seen with capital gains rates with the different administrations, uh, they raise the capital gains rate. It impacts uh, business and activity. So they say, oh, we've got to change that. So there's new businesses coming into the market. So then they lower the capital gains so people will invest. So there's an ebb and flow of the capital gains rate. Yeah. So the nice thing about this trust, you can decide when you're going to pay the tax. 
Oh, so okay. if the capital gains in 10 years was reduced, you could say, oh, I'm going to take advantage of that. It's just an election on your tax forms? Well, it's inside the trust, and the trust is managed by you, and, and there is an administrator of the trust, and you can shut down that trust and pay the tax anytime you want it. Okay. It's the maximum you can defer is 20 years. But during that 20 years, you receive an income stream of 5 or 6%. Just like you would receive rent on a 1031 exchange, mm -hmm. you would receive an income, and we would put the money inside, uh, we would invest it in the financial market. So mm -hmm. that, that money that, let's say you sold a $2 million piece of property, um, you would put the property in, the $2 million goes in the trust, we would generate an income stream that would come out monthly to you during that 20 years, at the end of the 20 years, you'd pay the same uh, cap. You'd pay the capital gains rate at that time. Right. But right. you use the government's money during that time frame. You've taken a, advantage of inflation. Uh, you know, instead of paying. The, Love it. The so under that scenario, we sell a two million dollar building, and let's say we bought it for a million, sell it for two. Let's say we fully depreciated it, so we've got a two million dollar gain that we would ultimately pay. We hope to 1031 exchange it. Can't do that. The Abide administration gets rid of 1031s. So we transfer the property into a trust, sell the property, um, take the two million of cash. We elect yeah. this. Uh, you put it inside a trust. Trust. There's an, there's an administration. There's an inter intermediary of fence like there is with a 1031. 1031. So, so the administrator is handling the trust. And you, the, the part of the code you said was 457, is that right? 453. 453, that's right. So 453, take the dollars, they're in the trust from the sale, put the property in the trust, sell the property, dollars come into the trust, it's irrevocable. The administrator invests those dollars in the financial market. So the trust yeah. now has its own, you know, identification number, it's investing yeah. in the market, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, whatever. And... Generates an income stream, let's say six, seven percent. It's in the trust and it's creating income. We could take money out of the trust through a distribution, but we've deferred now two million dollars. Let's say it would have been four hundred grand of tax or five hundred grand of tax, and that's delayed, delayed, delayed. I've got twenty years to decide. I hit a year. Let's say there's a new administration, which is going to be a new administration, whether Trump comes back or who knows what happens 10, 15 years from now. And all of a sudden, it's you know uh, reduced capital gains because if these capital gains have gone up and down dozens of times in the last hundred years, we find a year where the capital gains tax laws are favorable, and we decide to pay the tax. Maybe at that point, it's fifteen percent. It's three hundred thousand dollars. You pay the tax on your two million. You still got the two million in the account, right? Because you're just living on the interest. You now have mm -hmm. the three hundred thousand. You could pay the tax. It's a very low tax rate, but You've got to invest the $300,000 of the government's quote-unquote money for the last 15 years, earning interest on that and living on it. And so what you're saying, Kim, is if the 1031 goes away, there are there's still life. There is there still is. There's there's still alternatives. <laughs> 457, love it. Now, this is not something that I'm familiar with. How come I haven't heard about this before? I don't know. It's because it's been in the tax code all this time. It's been in there as long as the installment sale has been in there, which is, I, I think, since 1950. I, I can't remember the exact year, but it's been there a, a long time, and it's been tested. So this is just adding a twist to it that using this irrevocable trust scenario uh, to defer. Got it. So... Assuming we do this, right? So we've accumulated um, 3,500 units of apartments. You know, it's a $300 million portfolio. Fast forward 25 years from now, and I want to sell the whole thing. Who are the people that I would need to have on my financial team to help me kind of execute and just think this through? Who are some of the players that need to be sitting at the table with me or with some of our other audience that need help us navigate some of these decisions. Who are some people that you collaborate with? Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? 
We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Well, we collaborate with a company that has this real estate uh, install, installment sale trust already set up and know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And they're a company called uh, Dunham uh, Trust Administration. And they're out of Las Vegas, which is a great place to be because there's no state income tax. Yeah. And that was intentionally planned and they've been through it. And so I think having a company that can be the administration for a trust that you set up and knows how to manage it is is good. I also think having worked with an attorney that's actually done some of these, and we have a list of attorneys that we can work with and talk through how this might occur. And, and then we think having a great financial advisor to help you run some of those scenarios and make sure that, that the money that you're putting in the market is invested well. So we think that's a great team to have a good trust administration, to have a good financial tax attorney, and to have a, a good financial advisor on your team. Love it. Love it. That's great advice. Thank you for that. Um, I know you're not giving financial advice, so let's just make right. that little disclosure because I used to be right. a financial planner. <laughs> So we got to make sure we know that Kim and the Keystone team are not giving financial advice on this podcast. Everything they do is custom to their clients. Um, so this is just informational only. So we get that off, get the attorneys off our backs. Um, Kim, so how did you guys get into this? Like, what, what, how did you guys get going? What were some of the original challenges to, you know, just building your financial planning practice, um, you know, accumulating clients, and then also this th these types of niches with 1031s and helping people more on the distribution side, the management and distribution. I, when I was a financial advisor, I was working with a little bit younger clients. I was a little bit younger, so we were more in the accumulation phase. I had yeah. almost no clients, maybe a few who were really in the distribution side. So what were some of the, you know, uh, growth pains that you guys experienced? What were some of the exciting times that you went through in being an entrepreneur and building this, this practice? Well, I think, um, trying to find solutions for people, uh, actually seeing somebody go through a 1031 exchange, buying another 10 or, you know, exchanging it for a commercial property. And they were counting on the income from that exchange to live on mm -hmm. and the property couldn't be rented. So having gone through some of mm. those eb ebbs and flows, it's painful to see someone that has done a 1031 wanted to have the 5% or 6% income come off of that in rental income and they couldn't get the property rented. The new property, you know, through, through all those downtimes, the dips in the real estate market, and they were uh, rich on paper, but didn't have any income mm -hmm. to live by. And having gone through some of that really makes you look for other alternatives. Yeah, I love uh, it. I, I also think we, because of where we're located in, in uh, Phoenix, there are lots of people, lots of our clients in the distribution phase that have multiple rentals. So they were looking for a solution. How long am I going to have to keep the rentals? They're getting tired of doing all of the work that a rental requires. So with this intermediary sale, they could actually set up one trust and go through multiple sales with it. So it, it works for somebody that might have five rentals. You put the rentals inside. There's five different sales that you have to go through inside mm -hmm. the trust, but that works as well. So I, I think it, it came from uh, the types of clients that we were yeah, working Yeah, that's great. The Sun Belt, I'm jealous. Yes. 
I'm recording from Cleveland, Ohio, which is a fantastic area, but it's not Phoenix. Um, so, so help me understand one quick logistical question about this trust. If we're thinking about the distribution side of our life and we're winding things down, we want to sell, um, we have to set the trust up first, right? While we're living, while we're operating, and then move the properties into the trust in anticipation of the sale, right? We have to do it ahead of time. Before the contract is signed. Before the contract is signed. Okay, so it can be, you know, how real estate is. It's not like an instant just sell it like a stock and you liquidate today. Real estate's much more methodical when we're thinking, about. okay, we're going to improve the property. We're going to get the top income we can get. Then we're going to list it and get rid of it for sale, hire a commercial broker, a residential broker to sell it. Uh, so we've got some time, is my point, to set up the trust, deed the property in the trust, and then have the trust ultimately sell the real estate to qualify for the 453 installment type sale. Correct. Got it. Correct. Okay, I'm getting it. Thank you for this. I love learning new things. This is great. Very cool. I think there's one other thing. There is another option as well in that 453 some people want to buy real estate again. They don't want to sell and be in the financial market. They want to go right back in. Sure. So there is actually what they call a monetized installment sale, and it's the ability to defer and buy into other real estate. So mm. there are some other alternatives, and this is a 30-year deferral of those capital gains uh, and buying into other real estate. So um, it it wouldn't have the income stream coming out. You'd buy into the property and then defer. So that might be a solution as well. So there's, yes. there's, that's why having a good tax accountant and somebody that really knows these tools, or I say accountant, but I mean tax attorney, sure. that really knows these tools, it's worthwhile. Yeah. We want to we wanna really listen to what your goals are and then customize what you really need. Fantastic stuff, Kim. So after working with lots of clients that do this and seeing different administrations come and go and, you know, b very big difference between the Trump administration, the Biden administration, I don't think there's a more polarizing discussion on the differences between the two. It doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. I think we can all agree that they're very different. Um, yeah. But what advice, and again, I'm not asking for for financial advice, just kind of your personal thoughts on things that your clients should be thinking through, advice that you would give them or advice you'd give our audience just to think about what, as they go through their journey here in accumulating real estate, then distributing the real estate, um, you know, accumulating wealth, distributing wealth. What are some things that you've seen your clients do, you do, your firm do that have gone well? What are some advice that you would give them, some things to look out for? I think sometimes getting second opinions is helpful. Uh, interviewing more than one financial advisor, one tax attorney. I've had tax attorneys say that this monetized installment sale can't be done. You know, that the IRS oh. is not, not possible. And so some of your listeners might say, oh, that can't be done. I've also sat and listened and seen, uh, listened to another tax attorney and he's actually done it and he's doing five or six a year and he's been doing that for a number of years he's actually sat and um sat before the irs and he knows how to do it there's some requirements that you have to meet to qualify yeah. but i uh, i don't think you should be afraid to do some of that so get second opinions uh get to look at some of the research yourself I think listening, taking motion out of the transactions is another important thing. Uh, we had one client during the pandemic when uh, he had just invested, he was well diversified and the markets went down in March, you know, that mm -hmm. sure. drop. And the client just, uh, they could not handle that drop. Even though they were well diversified, we talked about that it's gonna be okay, just stay the course. They got out and you know, a week later the markets took off and yeah, markets you know, rebounded. had one of the best years ever. So I, I think not making emotional decisions is important. In my newest real estate investing book, The Flip System, 
you'll learn the proven secrets and strategies that I've used to be a successful real estate investor. You'll also hear the story of my journey from quitting my job to doing over 2,000 units of apartments. The flip system is now available for a limited time, and you can grab your free copy at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. You'll learn the same proven principles and secrets and investing strategies that I used to quit my job and pursue a life of financial freedom. In this book, I'm sharing exactly how I was able to personally close over 750 profitable real estate deals, make over 400 private lender loans, raise over $30 million, and acquire over 2,000 units of cash flowing apartments. Get my newest book now for free at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. That's getflipsystem.com slash podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great stuff. Um, so Kim, let's wrap up with our final group of questions. These are more really okay. probably more personal for you um, instead of business. Uh, just a few questions around uh, kind of your personal preferences and mentorship and kind of advice and things like that. So uh, question number one is, at, we all like to think. We need places to think and decompress. What's your favorite place or way for you to decompress and think about your life and business and being a great you know, leader and entrepreneur? What's, what's your favorite way and place to decompress and think? I love getting out on the golf course with my husband. There you when go. There's no phone out there. I... I, I really try hard not to take a phone with me and just enjoy uh, that outdoors and good friends when you're golfing. Yeah, um, isn't it funny how some of our best ideas come when we're just in our joy <laughs> and in our flow and we're having a good time and it's like, oh my God, there's a great idea that just kind of popped into my head. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, Kim, question number two, which is your favorite book or piece of advice that you've ever been given? I, I, I love hearing stories about when you sell a business and that's part of why I'm in, I think the business that I'm in and uh, Scott Schneider and there's an exit interviewing uh, book. It's kind of a boring book, but I love hearing the details of how you can really exit from your business. I just feel passionately about it. I actually went through a sale of a business myself before I moved to Arizona and I made some mistakes. You know, I, I did some things that I'd almost be embarrassed to tell you that I lost some of my leverage. Um, you know, I, you know, when you do business, you have your entity in one, uh, one, uh, business and you have your property in another. Mm -hmm. And I was selling my interest in the entity that we were do doing business together. And I signed away my leverage of the building mm. before I got fully paid for the non-building entity, if that makes sense. Got you it, have sure. your operations, and then you have your building and your lease, which is there's much more, uh, what I want, uh, leverage. You can make sure you're going to get paid. You're not going to release that building right. until you get paid on the other entity. So there are some things that if you just knew, you could save yourself some uh, some hurt or yeah. you know, trying to deal with it. So I think hearing people's stories about businesses, what they've done and how they've done it well or haven't done it well. Got it. Is there a book specifically that you, there that you is, what, what is that uh, called? Scott Snyder and uh, it's an exit interviewing or an exit, uh, in, uh, the exit institute. Uh, oh, walking behind the, oh, I should. Google we'll find it. Right. We'll find it. Scott Snyder. Okay. We'll find it. No problem. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, so Kim, last question is, is who do you think has been, the biggest mentor in your life and, and been, you know, behind the scenes pushing you uh, or leader that you follow or mentor that's had the biggest impact on your life and why? 
I I think um, I think my uncle uh, Vern. That's kind of a silly one, but he was uh, he was a man that uh, got up every day, worked hard, did an honest day's pay, and and treated people like he would want to be treated. And he's been my best mentor. I learned so much. I remember going with him in the milk truck in northern Minnesota and <laughs> watching as he went. You know, it was in the days before they had, the, they still were picking up milk cans. And he would go, and there were certain farmers that all, or always needed help getting their, their uh, cans ready to be hauled away. And just how he was always kind of that can-do spirit. If they needed help, he got out, he helped the farmer, he got the milk cans done. And just that work ethic, I think, has just been so ingrained in me that I just I love him for giving me that. Oh, that's fantastic. What a great gift to pass down, right? I got very much a similar type of gift from my father. Uh, watching him get up and just, you know, put his pants on and his suit or whatever he was doing, his uniform, and just get after it and work long and hard and then spend lots of time with, with, with us as kids and grandkids. As, you know, people that work really hard and just put in the time is, uh, is, is a great gift. I hope my kids are getting that from me. Um, <laughs> so, Kim, listen, fantastic interview today. I really enjoyed it. Um, if any of our audience wants to learn more about the 453 program, the Deferred Installment Sale, 1031 Exchanges, uh, pinging your firm for financial advice and financial planning, uh, where can they go to learn more about you? Uh, they can go to our website, which is uh, uh, keystonegroupaz.com. Uh, they can email me at kim at keystonegroupaz.com. And we actually would like to offer, we've got a spreadsheet that you can put in the proceeds of your sale, you put in the basis, and then actually run a spreadsheet and let you know if this intermediary installment sale trust might be a solution for you. So we'd love to run that for you. Uh, we do that no ob no obligation just to kind of give you a sense of what the income stream might be on that show you what taxes you would pay and we customize it whatever state you're living in, in we look up the capital gains for that state we'd love to run that illustration for you just to give you an idea even if it's not today it might be down the road so yeah. if you would email us that would be great you could also call at 623-299 9710. Fantastic. Listen, Kim, this was a great interview. I want to thank you personally because anytime I learn a strategy that can save me hundreds of thousands or potentially millions of dollars, um, and I've never heard of it before, my gosh, what an impact you're going to have on me and my business uh, over the next 10 or 20 or 30 years. So I just want to personally tell you how grateful I am that you were. Uh, carved out time to be on the show. Thank you so much for that. Guys, check out our website again, keystonegroupaz.com. And uh, again, alternatives to the 1031 exchange. It's on everybody's mind. You know that this is possibly coming. The 1031 exchange is a great tool. Defer, 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 and die. Get a step up in basis. If that gets taken away, here's an amazing alternative. And Kim and her group at Keystone can help you out with that. Kim, thanks so much today for being a guest on the show. Thank you so much for being oh, here. Thanks for having me, Josh. Okay. Thank you. So, hey, guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Kim. She was a great guest. Uh, just reminded me of a lot of the other people that I know from the financial services world that are out to help. Of course, they make money. Of course, they make commissions. Of course, they have clients, of course. But Kim, to me, just seems like such like an angel, you know, sitting on your shoulder as a financial advisor and this whole idea of this 453 installment deferment sale and using a trust to do that. Fantastic idea. So make sure you reach out to Kim's group. 
Uh, it's in the show notes. Make sure you reach out to them. If they can help you sell a piece of real estate, pay less tax, reinvest, and have a bigger, more fulfilling financial life. I hope you enjoyed the interview. If you did, leave us a rating, leave us a review, uh, subscribe to the channel so you never miss another episode. Tell us how we're doing. Uh, We appreciate all the nearly 200 ratings that we have, over nearly 140 uh, reviews. Uh, I would love to double that this year. I'd love to get to 400 ratings and 300 reviews. If you could help us do that, would be fantastic. Also, don't forget forget to hit the subscribe button. Wherever you get your podcasts or your videos, YouTube, iTunes, wherever it's at, hit the subscribe button. Guys, listen, I'm always just honored, privileged, grateful to come into your ears, come into your brain, share ideas. I hope you enjoyed this interview, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, Josh here, and do you want to win a free Accelerated Investor t-shirt? All you have to do is give Accelerated Investor, our podcast, Accelerated Investor, a rating and a review on iTunes. Okay, do that now. Then send us a screenshot on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. What we're going to do then is every week we're going to pick our favorite rating and review and we're going to send that person a free t-shirt and maybe again some other cool fun stuff as well from Accelerated Investors. So again, don't forget to take a screenshot, leave a rating, review, take a screenshot, send it to us so we know exactly who you are and then Once a week, every week on the podcast, we will announce a new winner. Don't forget to take a screenshot and send it to us so we know exactly who you are. We'll announce a new winner every week. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com.